Hello everyone, Kyle here. This is an excerpt from the Project Finance Modeling Package. Here, the underlying model is a wind farm model with most of the cash flow elements built, uh, except for tax in this specific video. Nevertheless, we go through running a few scenarios through the Scenario Manager and then recording the results on the data table. Let's jump into it. All right, so here we have a fully built model and we're on the scenario manager that's got two components, the scenario manager itself and then the data table for viewing outputs. Here we have the model which has built the calculations tabs and here the inputs tabs. So for case one, we have the base case. Now for the price selection, let's put this as central. This is the price estimate that just says, well, it's gonna be pretty much the middle case. Then generation selection, that's the volume. And we're gonna select P50. This just means that the 50th percentile probability of revenue that we will receive. So i.e. kind of like the middle case as well. What does that actually do? Well, here on the inputs page, we've got the revenue section and generation, i.e. volume. And we've got three different types of inputs. There's three different categories. We've got P50, P75, P90. And don't worry about that for now. All that's important is that this number here is going through to the applied cell and this number is going through to the model. So the whole point of this is that if we pick the P50 here on the scenario manager, which is coming through from here, if I'm in case one, Then what's happening is that this is active throughout the model and the same with the central. The central is now active, the 80 is active. If I change it to high, for example, and let me demonstrate that now, then the 85 is now active and that's going through the model. So that changes all the model metrics, of course, because you've got a higher price. Okay, so that's the basics of it. So case one, base case, that's usually the base case usually the debt case. So you might have that as a P90 and as a, let's say a central. Okay, so we need to put our data table in. I'm gonna select this and I'll explain more what I'm doing later in the scenario manager. Column input cell is the case number, hit okay. And there's no changes. Why? Well, because all these cases are currently the same. They're all pulling what's the inputs in case one are for case two, three, four, five. But we're saying, okay, for the base case, which let's say it's our debt sizing case, it's uh, P, it's central and P90. The NPV is $4.6 million and the IRR is 14.6%. So that's actually pretty good. I mean, partly the reason it's good is that we're not actually paying tax in this model because we're not calculating tax. But anyway, that's what we're producing. Our DSCR 1.24. So maybe that's a little bit low. Well, actually, uh, it should be okay. One, it might be 1.1 for a debt sizing case on a P90. That might be what we're sizing to. So that could be okay. Let's move on to case two. So I'm going to hit two here. Price high. So what should we do for that? Let's say the price selection is no longer central. It's high. And let's say we're going to bump it up by, no, actually, let's just leave it to one variable. So it's calculated automatically. So I didn't need to push F9 because my calculation options here were set to automatic. So usually go for this one. And I'll explain that more later as well. Okay, so price high. You get a bump in NPV and the IRR goes up to 16.85%. Your minimum DSCR is 1.32. So that's the CFADs divided by your debt service at the minimum point. And that's directionally seems right. You've increased your price. Okay, so let's go on to case three. Let's say OPEX goes up by, let's say 20%. So it's rather large. So what's going to happen here? Well, we're expecting what's going to happen is the NPV is going to drop. And same with the IRR. If this model is directionally correct, at least, then an increase in OPEX should mean you have less cash flow available for equity and therefore less NPV and IRR. So hit enter, F9, and you can see that drop slightly. So now it's 14.5% with a 14.64% IRR. Cash flow available equity is slightly lower. 
not actually that big an impact. You look at the DSCR. Why is that? Well, actually, in a wind farm model, the OPEX might be between 10 and 20% of your revenue, so it doesn't have a huge impact. What you can do is say, okay, how much does this have to increase by in order to get a DSCR of one? So that might be analysis that the, the bank would be interested in doing. And so on and so forth. You can actually automate that. So now I've hit case three. So here is going to be coming through. It's hard to see. But if I do Alt A W and G for goal seek, setting this cell to value one by changing the cell. Okay, so this has to go up by a thousand percent before the DSCR hits one. Now we can just check that and look at the cash flow waterfall. And this is what you will need to do. So if these go up by a thousand percent, then yeah, if you look at the cash flow available for equity, it's really, really low. Okay, so it's quite low. And what we're saying is we have a CFADS only just able to cover your debt service. And that's about right. And we're saying in the minimum position, it should be one. You can also say, where is the minimum date? Well, 31st of March, 22. 31st of March, 22. Well, it's over here. CFADS is 972 and the debt service is 972. So that's your one. So you can run a scenario like that. Okay, so in case two and case three, we've been running scenarios that are kind of one variable. What I want to show is the power of the scenario manager to run multiple variables. Let's say we're running a sort of disaster case. And this is where we're just throwing all the darts on the dartboard and we're saying, hmm, okay, what about if we get low price and maybe it's even lower than low, it's minus 5% and the generation is P90, which is low. And maybe interest rates go up by 2% and um, the inflation rate goes up by 1%. We're actually not sure that will have a negative impact on overall RR just yet. What does that do? Okay, so hit F9. Your MPV is negative. Your IR is still positive, so 4.21%. So not a complete disaster of a project. But you've breached your covenant there, so you've gone below one. Hopefully you can see that when we pile in a whole bunch of negative factors, how the overall project responds. It's also very interesting to run them like we have here where we've isolated them so that you can see, okay, what impact does the individual variable, changing an individual variable, have on the key metrics that you're looking for and the key metrics that someone else will look for, whether it's investors or banks. And here they are here, obviously the NPV and IRR, on the equity side, and then from the debt side, the DSCR and the minimum date. And here's some overall kind of cash flow metrics. So very interesting for all parties to see that. One thing you can do as well is to say, okay, for a 1% response in these key variables, so if the price goes up by 1% or uh, down by 1%, or OPEX goes up or down by 1%, or the interest rate goes up or down by 1%, what does that change do to a key variable like the IRR? And then you can plot that on a diagram so you can see how that comes out and give everyone a very visual idea of how the project responds to key variables. So that's all I really want to cover in the end game tutorial. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And just bear in mind that this is the result of many hours worth of effort, which you're going to go through in the course to get there. But it's really, really important to understand what are we actually using this model for? And this is it. It's for the valuation. It's for the scenario analysis, what we're doing here. And just for the understanding of how the asset, how the project that we're modeling, how that actually responds to the key variables. So this is kind of the top of the triangle there. In summary, you learned how this case study seeks to model a wind farm and the end game, how debt and equity might look at a finished model.